All right, Jason. How you doing, man? Good, man. How you doing? Good. Good. So let's talk a little bit about grinder safety when you're using it and, and looking at it and how you position the guard and, and working through that. Yeah, so first thing you want to check uh, when you go through the grinder, you want to make sure that it's completely serviceable. So go through, make sure there's no nicks, cracks, dings in the frame. Uh, make sure the cord is good. Make sure, you know, that all the prongs are intact and in, in place. You want to make sure that the, uh, the guard is the appropriate guard for the type of wheel that you're going to be using. So if we're using a cutoff wheel, we're going to want like a type 1 guard. Uh, any other wheels, uh, type 27. So you want to make sure you have the right guard. You also want to make sure you have the right one uh, for this grinder. So you want to make sure that it's, it actually came with this grinder uh, or it's uh, an aftermarket that's you know recommended for this piece. Yeah, that's so important, right? As we go out in the field, we, we're always looking at, at people using the, the products. Uh, some have guards, some don't. So it's really important to tell them to put the guard on, but they all think it gets in the way. Uh, it's something they struggle with. So just having it in the proper position and knowing that they can move that guard around right. is really important, right? Yeah, just like with this one, you know, we have a flip top. Some of them, they have a set screw in there. So, I mean, you can actually rotate the guard to the type of work that you're going to be doing. Uh, so the guard doesn't get in your way and it, it protects you as you're working. Yeah, that makes sense. And then today I see you've got a Tiger Pipeliner grinding wheel on there. So we're going to be talking specifically about multi-pass welding. And of course, the fir first pass after the tack is the root pass uh, or the bead. And we're going to talk about grinding the bead. And, and something special about this wheel is it's specifically designed to be able to grind that bead the way that everyone wants it to and to last a long time. But it'll also do uh, the different functions you need to do facing the land and, um, and grinding the bevel as well. Right, so if you look actually on the wheel, you can see that you can use this at a 45 degree angle as well as a 90 degree angle. So some wheels are only meant to be used in the 90 degree, degree position and people try to force them into a 30 or 45 degree and they're not getting the results they want. Uh, another thing that pops up is when you're using this, most wheels on a 90 degree, you know, going straight into that bead, you develop glazing on the exterior of the wheel. And then a lot of guys, they'll chip it with a file to build back some texture in there to, and get that glazing off to get it to cut again. So I guess with the new Pipeliner, you don't have to do that anymore. No, you don't. It's specifically been designed. So we've been out in the market for a year talking to welders and welders helpers, really working on hot welds. So that's been the key is as we've developed this, we've been working on 400, 500 degree welds. And as we do that, we want to make sure that we get the amount of cut rate that people want without the glazing. And it's also important what you mentioned. It's an eighth inch wheel. Eighth inch wheels are commonly called grinding wheels with any type of multi-pass application. A lot of people don't know what's in their eighth inch wheel. That eighth inch wheel might have two layers of fiberglass holding together, it might have three, right? This one's got a special bond, it's got special bones to allow you to use it like a wheel designed just for notching, but safe enough to use for uh, facing the land and grinding the bevel. So it's got everything wrapped up into one wheel. Another thing you wanna make sure is you have the appropriate size wheel for the grinder that you're gonna be working with. So if you're running a four, in, four and a half inch grinder, don't try to put a six inch wheel on there, even if the guard fits on there, because you're gonna exceed the RPMs and that disc is wanna, you're gonna wanna explode on a smaller grinder. So make sure you can check the uh, RPMs on the grinder and then match them up with the wheel itself and make sure that the, whatever's on the grinder doesn't exceed the recommendation on the, uh, the actual wheel that you're gonna be using. Yeah, you don't want, so one of the things about using the guard is it limits the size of the wheel you can put on there. So I can't tell you enough about using a, a seven inch wheel on a four and a half inch grinder, for instance, right? Right. It's not gonna allow you to do it if you've got the proper guard on there and you certainly don't wanna overspeed any type of wheel um, very, very dangerous, could break apart, especially when using a, a grinder that's over speed. And something to watch out for when you're using an air grinder as well. Definitely. All right, um, you want to go ahead and give it a shot? Yeah, so Jason's going to go into the booth. He's going to gear up a little bit, and we're going to work through some bead grinding. So as you look at the, the pipe inside there, one of the things or the first product he's going to use is the Tiger Pipeliner. And this Tiger Pipeliner, you can see right on the outside, made for Pipeliners, do not chip, do not alter. What we've seen from being out in the field is products that are out there, that have been out there for years, glaze over on hot welds. And what people do is they'll take a file, a common, a common piece, and they'll chip it, and they'll cut little grooves or scrapes into these wheels to make them cut faster or to dress them. Uh, definitely not something you wanna have to do, and with the Tiger Pipeline wheel, you don't have to do that. So as Jason suits up, he's going to get safe to get around there. He's going to be grinding what's called the root or bead grinding. And what happens typically in these multi-pass applications is the product is tacked. 
and then you put the bead grind down, and as he does that or go through the bead grind, that's ground out to a U. He's got to take out the wagon tracks, he's got to make sure there's no bug holes, and he's got full penetration with that bead grinded weld. After that um, comes the hot pass, you'll have a number of filler passes, and then you get into a cap pass. The hot pass through the filler, through the cap, is when we clean the weld, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So as he gets ready to go, he's going to take that wheel to vertical. So this is what we mean by notching. Um, and as he does that, you're going to see him go in there. You're going to see how smooth that wheel is. A lot of times what you see and what the Tiger Pipeline eliminates is that chatter. Uh, chatter isn't only uncomfortable if you would jump out of that weld and nick the body or scar the product. That could possibly be a cutout. If you've got to cut that weld out, that could cost a, a contractor or a distributor or end user more than, they, more than the cost of all those wheels together. So you can see how smooth that is, how he's going up and down. And as he takes that out, he's developing a little U in there. And you can see it as he twists that pipe around. Now he's in a prime, pristine angle typically out in the field, you're going around, and we're gonna to talk to Jason in a minute about how he feels on that as he works it around, but you can see on the edge of that pipe, he's grinding out, or grinding out that root, and when you're out on the lines, you don't have the capability to turn that pipe around and put it in the proper angle, right? Usually you're standing in a foot of water, you're going up underneath and going around the top, and what this does is that chatter, it really helps when you can't press down on that wheel to eliminate that type of chatter. So let's get uh, some of Jason's feedback, really, on how he liked that wheel and how it performed, and I'm gonna set him up with another wheel inside. All right. So initially what I realized, uh, or what I noticed initially, was um, it doesn't chatter, so there's no vibration. So when you hit the trigger and you start working through that, a lot of times, especially with a newer wheel, the, the grinder has a tendency to bounce. Well, that's pretty much been eliminated. It's very smooth, it cuts really fast, so you don't have to spend a lot of time with it. Um, that's one of the biggest things in industry is you, you waste a lot of time in your grinding efforts. So if you can expedite your grinding, that means more welding. Another thing, like uh, Tony mentioned before, there's no glazing. So that wheel's not gunking up with anything. You don't have to go back through and chip it off. Um, it's, it's a very smooth application. You can look at it between what the bead looked like originally and then what it looked like after. Uh, it's just a really fast wheel. So we'll go ahead. Uh, Tony's going to line us up with another product. I think we're going to use the uh, regular stringer bead wire wheel to just clean up uh, the exterior of the pipe, get rid of any BBs that might be on there before you get into that next pass. So as we get into this hot pass, Jason's gonna be using the 09000, what's known as the Stringer B. This brush was originally designed and brought out in the marketplace for Roughneck, Roughneck grinders. And as you can see, a Stringer bead is a tightly wound knot on these wheels, very tight to get into that bead as we get into the bevel, um, a little bit over that eighth inch groove. And one of the unique things about Weiler is you'll see and you'll feel, right, as you feel the edges of these, they're pre-trimmed. So there's no break-in period. They're ready to work right out of the box. This is the original, the trusted brand in the marketplace. Um, we're going to be running a stringer bead real quick. And then we're also going to let Jason try basically an 09000 on steroids. We've got a dually. And the dually was developed from market feedback that people wanted to be able to flip their brushes. And when you flip a brush and it doesn't have a nut on the other side, it makes it real dangerous, real tight on your knuckles, and um, really interferes with the guard. And we want to keep the guard on. So this wheel here has a dual nut, allowing you to flip that product. And it really self-sharpens as we go through that. That's what I was going to ask. If you want to go ahead and tell everybody exactly why you would want to flip that wheel over from one side to the other? Yeah. Absolutely. So as you're using a product and you're using these wheels, right, they're naturally going to wear down to one side. And as you flip it over, that sharp edge flips and you're using the sharp edge on the other side. So you're in essence self-sharpening every time you flip that wheel. It allows you to maintain, keep aggression. And one of the reasons you'd lose that wheel over a stringer bead itself is if you want to control that aggression and you want it to be as aggressive both sides on that flip. It also gets rid of that, that memory that kind of develops on the wheel too, to where they start wearing down and develop a memory, so they're, they're curved backwards as you're, as you're grinding into the piece. Once you flip it around, it, it erases that memory. Okay, so you have that option to flip it back and forth to kind of keeps, keep the, the, the wires in a neutral position so you're getting you know, quality grinding every time. And the, the third one we're going to let Jason try and comment on is what's called an encapsulated wheel. And this is a, an epoxy encapsulated wheel. It is a um, crimped wire brush encapsulated. It's going to work more 
uh, and feel more like a grinding wheel. You can put a little more pressure on this wheel. With the other two, you want to let the wire tips do the work. This one has the wire tips centered, focused. It's a lot more aggressive. So as you're using it, you're going to feel the aggression and you're going to feel the difference in the piece. Um, and it's going to give you a little bit more aggressive cleaning action. Okay. All right. Shot. So Jason's going to start with the stringer bead wheel that we showed you. So as he uses this wheel, Jason, clean outside of the, of the uh, bevel as well. So you can see, yep. So he'll get off some of the weld splatter. It's not only cleaning inside the bevel, it'll clean some of the weld splatter. And one of the things about a wire brush versus an abrasive wheel is it does not remove base material. So he's going to be able to clean off some of those BBs. He's going to be able to clean that weld, but he's not going to change the configuration of this part. And he's going to let the wire tips do the work. So pressure is the enemy. You don't want to lean too hard on these wheels. Um, that's how you avoid getting long wire breakage and getting the most life out of these type of wheels. So as he uses it, he's going to start up. And you can see it's a little different, right? It's throwing a lot less sparks. Those sparks that it's throwing is really the um, BBs and the other materials coming off the actual pipe. And as he goes outside, you can see how easily that's taken off. So any type of that scale, any type of that BBs, uh, any type of weld cleaning that he needs any, uh, to remove any type of inclusions as he goes through there. Um, one of the key things is a lot of, so if you're doing multi-pass welding, most often it's going to be x-rayed, it's going to be reviewed at some point, because these are critical parts. If a multi-pass weld fails, often or not, people can get really hurt. So as he does that and works through it, um, he's got a couple of other wheels. Um, he's going to unplug for safety, as you can see there, but he's got a couple other wheels that he's using he's going to take off. Um, the next one he's going to put on is the dually, and that allows him, so you can see him putting it on almost reverse, uh, what you would see, so he can put that on reverse or standard as he flips that wheel, and that dually is going to allow him to flip it back and forth and remove the memory that we talked about and give that self-sharpening action. Again, the same type of action you get, you don't want to put a lot of pressure with a wire brush, you want to let the tips do the work. And as he spins that around, you can see what we call an orange peel finish. So instead of a scratch brush finish, he's got an orange peel finish. So there's no scratch pattern there. It's really orange. So as we go through, he's going to use that. Same type of action. You can see how easily he is to remove any type of inclusions in the weld. And it's done really quick. So I've been on the lines where they're doing 46 inch pipe. And it's about a 30 second piece with the brother-in-laws going on the other side. And as they do that, they want to ensure every part's clean. And they often pop out of the bevel a little bit. So it's a little different. You don't want to pop out of the bevel with a grinding wheel and scar that bevel or cause any type of repairs. When you're coming about, especially when you're doing a cap pass, it's quite often that they're coming offside or outside that bevel and just cleaning it up to make sure everything gets cleaned and you're ready for that next pass. So he's going to flip it over, get a feeling of flipping it over. And then the last product he's going to use is the, is the encapsulated. But as we go through that and he flips it over, so he's able to really use it the other way, uh, reduce that memory and shelf sharpen that wheel as he goes through. Um, and as he works through these passes, really get a clean pass. So he's gonna pass inspection x-ray as he goes through these multiple passes. All right, we got one more product to try before we have Jason come out and comment on what he feels and as he's going through this. So the next product he's gonna put on is called an encapsulated brush. And this encapsulated brush is a crimped wire brush. So he's got a lot of wire there exposed, but just the tips of wire, uh, it holds it together. It eliminates any type of wire breakage and it gives a lot more aggressive clean on that piece. So as we go through and, and use that brush, it's a lot more aggressive. It's good for the hot pass getting in the bevel um, not something you necessarily want to use for the cap pass when you got to cover a lot of area. It's more aggressive, focused in its cleaning action. He can control really his area that he's cleaning a lot better. There's no flaring of the product at all. And if he wanted to, he could make a straight seam up and down that pipe. All right, we'll get Jason out here. We'll get him to tell uh, what he thought of each one of those. And um, we appreciate... Uh, Weld.com coming down, trying out our product. He's uh, <laughs> making sure his, his hood's turned off and he's ready to come out and just give us a review of these type of products. So you really can see that orange peel finish I was talking about. There's no base material removed. 
and it's done with cleaning. So let's start with the stringer bead. We'll go to the dually, and then we'll go to the E-cap and, okay. and see what you thought. I noticed on the, uh, the stringer V, um, the grinder does all the work for you, which it should. But a lot of times, depending on the wheels that you purchase, um, you have to put a lot of weight into them to get them to do anything. This reacts right away. So as soon as you put it on there and pull the trigger, it's clearing off all the weld spatter, any of the smoke, soot, slag that's entrapped in there, it's peeling everything back. All right, what'd you think about the dually, being the, able to flip it? I like the fact that you can, because it, it doesn't develop a memory, you can switch it back and forth. And like you said earlier, it's actually sharpening the, the, uh, the tines as, as you flip it from one side to the other, you can kind of resharpen the side that's wearing out. Yeah, the end of the knots, right? So you're you're getting twice that. as much use out of that because I would venture to say that eventually this is going to develop a memory and it's not going to cut as well as it did initially. Yeah, it's going to it's going to allow you to control the actual aggression of the brush because some people like it a little less aggressive, some people like it more aggressive. Right. So let's talk about let's talk about the encapsulated wheel. So I noticed on this one, this one is a lot more aggressive than I anticipated. I didn't think that it was going to do a whole lot. Um, just because it's encased in like a hard epoxy resin or plastic, I'm not sure exactly what you guys use. But I think this one was probably the most aggressive out of all of them. It, it dug in really quick and cut the time in half. So I mean, this one worked a lot better than I anticipated. <laughs> so that, and you really just have to pick the right product for you. Um, if you're going to use an encapsulated brush, you want to use a filler pass brush as you get on through the uh, fillers and the uh, caps. Right. Um, stringer bead, you can go through the whole thing. Again, depending on if you have product to move out, we've got filler pass brushes. We've got a display, a multi-pass display for everyone to come in and see, come down. Awesome, I definitely guys uh, appreciate you guys having me out here. Guys, if you have any questions, come in here. These people are experts. Uh, what we know about welding, they know about abrasives, cutting, and grinding. So come talk to these guys. Uh, if you have a special application, I'm sure they'll be able to find the right product for you. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you soon. Appreciate it.